How do the scientific facts about carbon and climate shape policy? Carbon accumulates. Let's think about the policy implication. Let's compare carbon emissions to air pollution, the other major impact of energy use. As we've discussed earlier, air pollution from our energy use has profound worldwide consequences. It kills several million people a year and shortens the lives of people in the most polluted cities by many years. Yet, the air pollution you breathe depends on the emission of pollutants only over the last few days. If we could somehow stop emitting all these pollutants, the air would be clean in weeks. Climate is not like that. Suppose we eliminated all carbon emissions today. Temperatures would continue to slowly increase and only stabilize about a century from now. Sea levels would continue to rise for many centuries. Eliminating emissions will stop the main human force that drives climate change, but it will not make climate change go away, not for a long time. Carbon dioxide spreads globally, so the climate impact of one ton of CO2 emissions is the same, whether it is emitted in Beijing or Rio de Janeiro. Air pollution is more localized. Some air pollutants have impacts over just a few kilometers, others over an entire continent. But collectively, air pollution risks are much more localized than climate risks. These cold scientific facts have profound consequences for climate policy. This is a big part of the reason it's so hard for us to get agreements to cut carbon emissions. When a country incurs a cost to cut air pollution, it usually receives most of the benefits from the cleaner air and gets those benefits relatively quickly. Contrast this to carbon emissions, where countries may have to incur large costs to cut emissions, and yet the benefits are spread over the whole world and are not fully realized for centuries. This difficulty is further compounded by the fact that it's cheaper to cut air pollution than carbon, and that countries have different contributions to carbon emissions over time. For example, look at this figure showing current carbon emissions, flow, and historical contributions to the carbon stock. Notice that the countries with the largest historical contributions, like the United States, aren't necessarily the same as those with the largest current emissions, like China. Both climate and air pollution are, in the language of economists, public goods. It's always hard for societies to coordinate to supply public goods, but it gets harder when the benefits are further away in space and time, and harder yet when the costs are high and the responsibilities diffuse.